it's time to talk about one of the most infuriating things in Smash. No, it's not Gaming Watch's Up Special, or Pac-Man's Bell, or Fox's Neutral Air, or even Arson. It's Quick Play. What's up guys, my name is Kristoff, and today we're gonna to be talking about Smash's new online system that has gotten a ton of controversy for, well, a lot of reasons. But before we get started, if you guys want to get better at Smash, go get yourself a pro coach on ProGuides.com using the description link below. All right, let's get into the video. So the GSP system innovates on normal ranking formats, but it probably should have just copied them instead. The player base is global, so finding a good connection can be hard. Connections get even worse considering the Switch doesn't have a built-in Ethernet port, so you have to buy an adapter if you want lower lag matches. You can't change characters in between rematches, so it doesn't simulate competitive play well either. It also doesn't tier competitors well, only having Elite Smash and non-Elite Smash to separate skill levels. It doesn't have Squad Strike, there's no separation between competitive and casual, and the list goes on longer than that. Quick Play has its problems, but is it bad for practice? So for this video, we're not going to talk about everything Smash Online because that's a pretty wide topic. Mostly we're gonna focus on the positives and negatives of playing on Quick Play and how it compares to a few alternatives like Arenas, Discords, and Anther's Ladder. Before we start, there's one point we want to be clear on. If you want to be competitive, offline tournament experience is just the best. There is no way around this, and there's only a very few niche cases where this wouldn't be the case. Most of competitive Smash is played offline, and offline bracket play will always be the go-to format. So if you haven't yet, it's a good idea to go to a local, and for those of you who don't know what a local is, that's a small tournament that usually runs weekly or bi-weekly. At locals, you can get a feel for what a bracket looks like and how your skill ranks in a wider environment. If you want to find a local, just Facebook search your city or state and then join a relevant Smash group and look for listed events. So why don't we all just go to locals every day? Well, a lot of reasons. One, they cost money. Usually it's only 5 to 15 bucks, but that stacks up if you go to a lot of them. Two, distance. You might not live near any locals. Three, time. Locals can take a whole evening and you might not be playing the entire time. So what's an easy way you could fight others without having to deal with money, time, travel, and people? Oh, right, well, there is Quick Play. This is the first strength of Quick Play. It's a lot more flexible than other kinds of practice. You can pick up, play, and put down the game really easily. If you've got only 15 minutes, offline play probably isn't an option, and even Discord's or Anther's Ladder will take too much to set up. Quick Play just makes the most sense if you're at home and have a short time window to play an opponent. I mean, it's literally called Quick Play. What a weakness, though, is that Quick Play is just too quick. Quick Play is kind of like the speed dating of Smash. You pair up with a DDD that spams Gordos on the ledge and beats them, but lose a portion of your humanity in exchange for that GSP. And then they even refuse to rematch you. Never again. Then you pair up with a sick Falco who's playing their heart out and narrowly beats you. You rematch, and they refuse. There's a reason why competitive Smash rarely ever has best of ones, and at its peak makes players fight it out over five games. Each game gives time to make adjustments and learn right there on the fly. Unfortunately, even though GSP is mostly meaningless, our lizard brains hate to see the numbers go down. When the numbers go down, your brain gets the bad time chemicals. Lizard brain wants numbers to go up, so your brain gets good time chemicals. So people tend to not rematch in those close, good matches because they want a weaker opponent. We're being a bit glib, but genuinely, your brain is coded to want to see those numbers go up. Yes, it's a dopamine release. Yes, it's like Instagram. Most of us don't have Instagram, but whatever. Success is a dopamine rush. But the best way to actually learn is to rematch, even if the numbers go down. In quick play culture, rematches are all too few. But Quick Play's biggest weakness isn't really in the culture, it's in the net code. Mainly, Quick Play doesn't do enough to protect you against intense lag and bad connections. Quick Play will try to match you with people nearby, but even they might be playing on Wi Fi rather than a wired connection. And Wi Fi just isn't reliable enough. You need an Ethernet connection to be stable. 
If you have good Wi-Fi, as much as 90% of the game could be totally fine, but the 10% of lag can actually turn the whole match and disrupt your practice environment. For example, a big part of practicing and learning matchups is learning your timing. You might have finally gotten down the timing for the optimal punish when that Roy main forward smashes your shield, but then the match lags as you input and you're just a few frames late and you miss the punish window. Your brain basically now has bad info that doesn't apply to offline info that it has to throw out. So you're just building bad habits when you do play on quick play. Even in stable connections, lag will change the timings of certain moves and make things like parrying a bit trickier. Personally, when I play online after playing offline, it always feels a bit sticky and slow. But after a few matches on stable connections, my brain adjusts. The point being, online play can be about as consistent as offline play, but the additional lag changes the feel. The difference in feel isn't large enough to invalidate online play, but it is large enough to change online play. So you do tend to see more projectile characters online, you do tend to get some cheesy strats that fall apart more easily offline, but it's disingenuous to say that's all online play has to offer. Some of the best online players main characters that we stereotype as bad online, but good offline. For example, King Chris plays ZSS and Dusty Carpet plays Shulk. So at a stable connection, online play is an imperfect but actually solid simulation of offline play. At an unstable connection, it just isn't. And this is a problem for quick play. Since there's no quality control for quick play, you can run into laggy opponents. However, as you get nearer to Elite Smash, you get less laggy opponents. Listen, Nintendo, I don't need taunts, but boy, could I use a post-game chat option and tell my opponents to buy a LAN adapter. Now you could go to arenas to try and find more competitive opponents with better connections, but since there's no region filtering, you could get an opponent from the Maldives. At that point, you're not playing Smash as much as you're collaborating with them to make a nice PowerPoint presentation. If you do want to get a better connection, Anther's Ladder at SmashLadder.com is probably a better option. It's a service that's been around forever that basically makes the ranking system Nintendo would have made if they understood how to internet. It's got an all-around better reputation for setting up matches at equal skill levels and connections. The only issue, though, is that it's much less convenient and will take you signing up, finding a match, making the arena, and so on. The player base is also naturally quite small. That's another advantage of Quick Play, the player base. You can find a ton of different characters on Quick Play at any given day, and that's great matchup practice. Now, you'll get even better matchup practice by going onto Smash Chords, finding a Smash character's Discord, and requesting friendlies. The character Discord method gets you better feedback and helps you target matchups better. You may also get a consistent online training partner in the process. On the flip side, the quick play method is faster and more convenient. It's also better for teaching random matchups you may not know you need to practice. Sure, you don't think you need to practice against Wii Fit Trainer, but maybe one day John Numbers enters your regional tournament, and that random practice at least helps you avoid getting bodied. There's one last downside to quick play, and it's that the internet makes people scummy. The sad truth is that our lizard brains are made for in-person interaction. The internet puts up this weird wall that makes it easy to assume the worst of people and to just not care about others. So you get these people online who do all kinds of weird, mean stuff. Just like my weird friends who are obsessed with 4chan. They'll unplug their ethernet cord when they're losing, they'll play the grimiest, rudest style possible and refuse to rematch when they squeak out a win because they know you were figuring them out. They'll teabag you when you SD. They'll do all kinds of disrespectful stuff. And yes, we'll all laugh at it on Twitch, but if we are the person getting teabagged, it's not gonna feel very good. And they do all this awful stuff because, well, you don't know them, they don't hear your voice, and they just simply don't care. Or actually, it's kind of fun to do that stuff sometimes. Although it's intangible to the game, it's a huge morale blow for a lot of people and it can cause tilt. It just makes quick play unfun and it's hard to practice and focus when you're having no fun. Well, to be honest, it's kind of fun when I watch my friend play quick play and I see him getting teabagged, I, I think it's great. But anyways, I digress. The grimy play is more localized into a middle zone of quick play. In Elite Smash, players have more honor because they take it more seriously. And in low level GSP players, obviously, are going to be teabagging everyone because they aren't that good yet. 
If you guys want to get good like those elite players, then go to ProGuides.com and get your pro player coach right now. I'm sure they're online waiting for you as we speak. So is quick play good for practice? Believe it or not, yes it is. Are there better alternatives? Yes, there are. If you want to improve and you have the time, Anthers, Ladder, Character Discords, and Locals are the way to go. But make no mistake, sometimes you won't have the time, and Quick Play is good for that situation. And if you're looking for more ways to train in general, you can always check out our channel. Click that sub button if you found this video useful or if you want to see more videos like this. We've got a few guides on how to break bad habits, how to build training regimens, and more. If that's not enough for you guys, then head over to Pro Guides, get your pro coach. There you can get your coaching and then also watch some courses made by great pro players like Zero, MK Leo, and Esam. All right, that's it for me, guys. Once again, this has been Kristoff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.